All right. All right, we're back. Another, we're back. Another episode of The Last Campaign. We're going to just keep calling it that for now until we think of a better, something yeah, better. Yeah, until we come up with a new campaign. Yeah, until there's no more campaigns. <laughs> um, but um, sorry I was late. I was woken up this morning to extremely loud thunder. It yeah. sounded like bombs were going off. And my dog was extremely scared and didn't want to leave me alone. So I woke up in a haze, and I think I turned off my alarm, but I made it. And we're here. It's, it's nasty so weather scary. outside. We're in the boat. Uh, nice and cozy in here um, on beautiful Lake Louisville. Uh, beautiful shades of brown in the water. And green. And some green mixed in. And <laughs> um, so... The uh, um, State of the Union address was last night. Unfortunately. Uh, today is Wednesday, February 8th. Um, so last night, uh, Joe Biden, uh, if you want to call it a speech, I'm not sure what that was, but um, that kind of tells you how I feel about it. Uh, I, I really honestly feel like it was riddled with half truths and then some uh, some untruths. Um, definitely, you know, there were some uh, some truths there, but but I just feel like the man is kind of living in a different reality than than most Americans. So I'm not really sure how to how to take what what he says or if if you take it just with a grain of salt and just look forward to the next administration because i think this one is essentially over i, I just can't mm. imagine a world where he wins another election but yeah i mean it was hard for me to imagine a world where he won in the first place yep so now i'm questioning everything Yes, you know, <laughs> definitely, definitely. And I mean, it's funny how they, the Democrats, will stand and applaud after everything he says. He'll mumble through a sentence, and they'll stand up like it was, you know, some profound statement, and all start clapping. And you know, the Republicans aren't standing up. They're, in fact, some some of the t at some points they were like yelling at him. Did you see that? Yeah. Like yeah, <laughs> there, there is a the one lady I can't remember her name. Um, oh, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yes, she was very <laughs> upset. Um, she was yelling at him. <laughs> yeah, um, he, but you the know, point I was gonna say is, come on, we, I mean, maybe not Marjorie Taylor Greene, but we know behind closed doors, they're all shaking hands, and you know, they're all on the same team. I kind of think you're right. I I I think I think there there's a an, an amount of showmanship that has to happen, um, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, uh, but behind closed doors, I really think most of them really want to uh, make our country a better place. Uh, it's I don't understand how some things happen in Washington. Uh, I don't understand how when when I look at this. Uh, the the cabinet that Joe Biden has right now. <laughs> when I look at, um, I mean, anyone, transportation secretary, Buttigieg. I mean, uh, it, all of these people he has in place, I I really don't understand their qualifications. Well, Buttigieg is good at running trains. So that's, that's why he wants to be an engineer. He's he a wants transport. To Yes, <laughs> as a mayor, he all those uh, in Indiana, all the transportation <laughs> he was in charge of that yeah. qualified him for the job. Um, I, I, you know, it, I, it's beyond me. But what I do, yeah. I, I look forward uh, to the next election, where hopefully we can 
correct the course, right the ship, mm-hmm. and uh, and move forward. Uh, it, when you really struggle like he did to find good things to say about your own administration, um, it, it, almost everything he said was a half truth. Yeah. Um, like uh, inflation has fallen every month. For the last six months. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that is true. Inflation is coming down. But what what that would mean to most people is that prices were coming down. But that's not what that means. Mm-hmm. Inflation is just not rising as much. Yeah. And so instead of a 9% rise, which is where it was at its highest... Mm-hmm. You know, he failed to mention, you know, the first 18 months of his, of his so, presidency, 9% inflation was the peak. Yeah. And so, yeah, so every month it's dropped a half a percent. So it didn't rise 9%, it only rose 8.5%, and then it only rose 8%, and then 75 and then 7 So it's coming down. <clears throat> the rate of inflation is coming down. Exactly, yeah. 6% is still high. So 6%. But my question is, so when they calculate inflation, is it year over year? So like this year, if it was 6% inflation, and next year it was like, you know, also 6%, then it's like, it's a different, it's it's more, right? That 6% is more the next year than it would be this year because the total is already higher? Yeah, essentially, yes, essentially, so if something was, uh, take take easy math, what, which, which, what I can do. Yeah, me too. <laughs> if it's a dollar it's now yeah. and a 10% inflation, it's a dollar 10. Mm-hmm. Then another 10% inflation, it's a dollar 21. Yeah. And so, so yes, it compounds every yeah, it's compounding, year. Yeah. So your your wage needs to go up. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're a company, you're, uh, you know, uh, you're you have to uh, charge higher prices mm-hmm. to Set cover your cost. Seven percent every year. At yes. Least. Yes. Yeah. I mean, every that's that essentially. That's why, you know, kind of a standard raise is 2 to 3% a year because that's mm-hmm. traditionally about where inflation is or should yeah. be or where it averages out. Um, no inflation isn't necessarily the best thing, um, but 9% inflation is catastrophic. People can't, people can't pay their bills at that. But the first, first thing that has to happen is they need to because um, their wages aren't keeping up. Yeah. 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 They 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 have to, and and typically inflation, when when there is an adjustment like there has been recent recently with wages, it it lags, mm-hmm. right? So inflation goes through the roof. People can't pay their bills. They start changing jobs so they can make more money. Mm-hmm. Then finally, employers start paying more to keep up with. Inflation. Well, that now, comes way later. now everybody's months behind on yeah. on their bills, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and, and stuff like that. Stuff. Y- yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, and nine percent really for a person who lives week to week, which I would I would uh, venture that um, most. Uh, I don't know what the number is. I would say most. I would say more than half of Americans live week to week. It, it could be as high yeah. as 70. <clears throat> I think it's a lot. I, I mean, I remember hearing a number not too long ago, and I was kind of surprised at first. But, I mean, if you think about it, the more money people get nowadays, the more they spend, the more they get in debt. So, at all times... I mean, most people are about a month away from being homeless, or three months, you know, because yeah. if you get three months behind on your mortgage, you know, you're you're evicted. Yeah. So, you know, they're, they're all, 
judging their expenses based on month to month and you know the more they get per month the more bills they get per month so it's like you know they don't have a surplus no that's true uh, and then you get a stimulus yeah. thrown in the mix and uh, unfortunately most people don't know how to manage it mm -hmm. some people do well with things like that most people uh, don't manage their money well enough to yeah to use that for for its intended purpose but um i bought an ar-15 with my stimulus package <laughs> <laughs> you know what that's that's just what that's what I we thought do it was my american duty yes exactly um so there's that and then there excuse me i thought i heard someone walking on the boat uh, um so uh that and then companies you know a lot of companies got stimulus uh that uh, my company we did not get much stimulus we got a few thousand bucks because because we, at that time uh we only had uh, a few people on uh on the payroll that were receiving w-2s uh, a lot of our people are you know contract labor and 1099 1099 so um so they were out of luck you know they don't get yeah. that they didn't get that um but uh we had already made some uh adjustments for the for the, the kind of the covid lockdowns and stuff so we were down to a, a small crew um but I would say it, it, it did help us, uh, you know, a little bit in that respect. But uh, m there were a lot of uh, a lot of people who who, you know, kind of worked the system, even, oh, you yeah. know, fraudulently. Oh, I mean, yeah. they say about half of the money that went out was yeah. fraudulent. So a ridiculous amount, probably. Yeah. So, um, OK, well, we're getting off track. Back to the, back to the, <laughs> I'm starting to ramble. I do that a lot. I mean, it is the state of the union, you know, and I don't know. I feel like if you just took him at his word, I, you know, most of the stuff he was actually saying, if I could understand it, was reasonable and, you know, like made sense. But I just know that he doesn't believe it, first of all. And that's not what he really wants. He's just saying what he thinks everyone wants to hear. Because mm -hmm. he knows that he's in trouble. You know, and now he's like taking Trump positions. Like, a hundred percent. I, I, like, they're going to have all the manufacturing in America now. And, yes. Uh, if, you know, all the infrastructure needs to be built with American products and stuff like that, which sounds fine. But what I was thinking is. What do you think about that? Do you think all the all the material for you know American infrastructure should be bought in America? I think there should be. Um, okay, I'm I'm for free enterprise. You know, worldwide. I think you should be able to do anything on you know in the world you want to do. But. Um, I think when our national security uh, is is at risk. Um, so, for example, uh, one of the things Huckabee said last night, and her, her was it her? Yeah. She was talking about yeah. Did she was did she mention the. Uh, you know the materials that we buy for our bombs for example i don't i think i think that was something i saw earlier in the day but anyways so most of the materials that we use to make most of our military yeah. equipment comes from china so i think you have to have some regulation there um there was a there was a time when uh even the highway department you had to prove to them that the product that they were buying from you was made in america yeah you couldn't import it um the uh military i would think would be 100 percent made in america yeah. because why i mean why would you 
put yourself in that position. It's like our our chips for our cars. Why are we even in this position? Yeah, they're but, all in, like ninety percent of yeah. maybe even more is in Taiwan. Yeah, and I I don't know that that <clears throat> affects our national security as much or just our comfort level. You know, economic but, security. But, yes, definitely economic security and. Uh, at some point, it, it affects our national security because um, even now that that issue is not resolved, and yeah. you know, um, if if we can't keep our cars in good repair or mm -hmm. our, even our military vehicles in good repair, then they're no, not going to be any good when it comes time for us to defend ourselves. Well, I've heard that they're in disrepair, like the ICBMs and. Mm -hmm. Oh, I believe it. Well, not only that, but we're we're placing ourselves in a really poor position. Uh, I believe, and I, this this is not a reflection of how I feel about the 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 war in Ukraine. Um, but we, we are sending a lot of artillery and equipment to Ukraine. Tanks. Yeah, missile defense systems. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff. Um, we're also starving our nation of materials. Yeah. China is starving our nation of materials we need to keep our infrastructure and our military reserves mm -hmm. uh, stockpiled. So, China is in an awesome position right now, right? They have us fighting helping fight a war against Russia, who mm -hmm. they are allies with. Um, and they're, they're cutting off our supplies on, on many fronts. Oh, yeah. Uh, medicines being one of them. A lot of medicines, a lot of uh, uh, ingredients to medicines we use come from China. Cobalt, I think. Oh, yeah, batteries. batteries. Yeah. Convince them to all use battery-powered stuff, <laughs> rechargeable stuff, rechargeable cars, and then let's cut off the supply of cobalt. So the State of the Union, would you rate the State of our Union 1 through 10? What would you rate it? Well, I, I wouldn't. It, it's, it's not too late, right? <laughs> so it can't be too awfully low. And the way that our union is designed um, is that when we have poor leadership mm -hmm. um, we have checks and balances and we're able to recover it so mm -hmm. how much damage can you do in four years how much damage can you do in eight years you know mm -hmm. theoretically we can recover from from that and I think it's not too late to to recover um, it's going to be more difficult uh, because of some because of how far behind we are, I believe. And then when you add two years of of uh, non education to uh, an entire generation, yeah. Um, really, really. Also, people think mostly about kids, children, uh, school age kids when it comes to that. But but you know, there's a lot of people in the workforce that you know they continually learn. Their entire life, their entire career, they're getting, getting better and better. At, yeah, certifications. They're, you know, the the you know being around people. What you the knowledge you gain at you know just roundtable discussions and stuff like that mm -hmm. is it's way different than, on you know, virtual learning. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like yesterday, I did a, like a quick training with a bunch of new hires over Zoom. And I was just talking to myself the whole time. Like, I didn't, just, no, you know, no one's responding. And when I say, hey, did y'all hear that? It takes, like, 30 seconds for them to unmute it and then tell me. Yeah, they it. yeah, or like, run back in the yeah. living room from the <laughs> yeah. kitchen or yeah. put the dog up or whatever. They're not paying yeah. attention. So it's a totally different thing. And, and so I, I, my point is there's there's two years right there that we have that we we're screwed mm -hmm. and then Biden Turn came up. into office and there's another two years that mm -hmm. we kind of got screwed uh, in a lot of ways I believe and uh, so I 
I think we're already four years in to to, to uh, woke liberalism. Um, you know, I, I think the lockdown. I I can make an argument that the the lockdown was part of that movement I, because I believe that. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, I I think at the point where it starts becoming uncomfortable and I hope we're there I, I think I'm starting to see that we are there that they are realizing that they have shot themselves in the foot and they have to save face and try to undo what they've done it's a very difficult thing um, but I, I see some glimpses of that with some people mm -hmm. so State of the Union right now, considering all of that. One through ten. <clears throat> I, I, there, there, there's an asterisk, but I'm going to say five. I'm going to say five. Um, next year, some it'll either be way different. And one year is going to make a big difference right now. Yeah. One year. It's either going to be way different. I mean, it's going to be way different. It's either going to be way worse or way better. We're going to be on a track, mm -hmm. I believe, that will be taking us down a good path or a bad path. Well, it does feel like it's kind of time to swing back into the getting the economy going again. You know, like it's, it seems like it. But I guess we'll see. I believe, though, when you say the state of economy, uh, state of the uh, union, I, I believe there's a lot of people in the union that would tell you that we are headed the direction they think we should be headed. Hmm. So, um, well, what does that mean? Does that mean we're still a union? Because a lot of people think we're headed in the right direction, yeah. which is not a union anymore. Which which kind of is a pun that I just stumbled across. We will be headed. Yeah. <laughs> we will be beheaded. Yeah. Um, so our union, I believe, if we don't start turning the corner, bringing it back around, mm -hmm. um, uh, it 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 we don't have much further to go. We're pretty close to the edge right now, I believe. Oh yeah, I believe. Uh, so, so it would all it would take, really, honestly, is uh, um, China pulling the trigger. If China yeah. says, you know what, it's time to squash America. I, I hate this. There, there'll be a a group of Americans that will survive that mm -hmm. and and peel off and. Uh, be Chinese now? No. Well, yeah, there's that. That would be most of America. But there will be a group of us just like the British. That's, that when, when we got tired of their rule, we're, we're going to say, you know what? That's not who we are. We're not going that direction. So, you know, give us Oklahoma, Texas, yeah. Louisiana, New Mexico, whatever. We'll take it. And, uh, yeah, we'll, t we'll draw a line from, uh, yeah. you know, Florida across to, to, Arizona. to Arizona and call it. Yeah call it America or something but um, and and I would also say we would be able to defend that against China oh yeah China there's no way they could take it from there us. would be a rifle behind every blade of grass oh, yes yes <laughs> there would be there would be so much uh, artillery that they, yeah. they wouldn't be able to do it um, they would throw people at it yeah, yeah like that's what China did well that kind of brings us to our next segment if you were the president and I walked into your office one day and I said, Mr. President, nice boots, but there's something flying over Montana right now. People thought it was a UFO, but turns out it's just a real big balloon. We don't know if they're spying on us or what the deal is, but it looks heavy. What should we do? Yeah. What do you do? So, okay. So, I'm I'm obviously nowhere near as smart as Joe Biden. <laughs> well, let's say two years ago, Joe Biden. 
He's yeah. not as sharp as he was. He used, but, to, he used to plagiarize pretty good, but now he's having, he, a, hard he's time. Nice, having a hard time yeah. digging deep enough to <laughs> remember those stories. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I can look at a balloon that has a satellite hanging from it <laughs> and realize that something fishy's going on. So, it's kind of like this. If you're walking towards me and you have your gun pulled mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Um, and if you're, you're just in the wilderness and you see a person. Because that's what, I heard somebody put it this way once and it makes a lot of sense. Like our country is our country, but the whole world is like the wilderness. You know, it's just, yeah. it's just nature. It's yeah. just the world. Yeah. So when you're in the world and say you're walking through the wilderness and you see a guy way off in the distance, you don't know him, he's from a different tribe or whatever, he speaks a totally different language. And you say, hey, are you friendly? And, he, you know, he starts waving his hand silent. back. Yeah, yeah and, and he looks kind of angry, though, so you put your hand on your gun, and he sees you put your hand on your gun, and he's yelling at you, and you're like, I'm, 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 it's okay, it's okay. And he just sees you yelling and waving your hand with your hand on your gun. And he starts grabbing his gun, and then, you know, and you're like, yeah, what do um, you do? I mean, you just... You... It's exact. Well, here's what you do. Um, you protect your house. Yeah, exactly. So, it is our government's sworn mm. duty, sworn mm. responsibility to protect our borders. <laughs> it is fun. It, it is fun. <laughs> Right. You say borders. It, it, but it is. The border yeah. goes up. You know, yeah. it's not just land. You know, we don't. So, so, but, so now you know that you know where he stands on protecting our borders. He doesn't. I, I believe, I would bet money that there is an agreement with Joe Biden. Oh, yeah. And Chinese. Mm hmm. The chai comms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that it, it was in place before he was in place. Right? Oh, it, yeah. it, it's all groomed. He's he's there now, and he's fulfilling his promise to them. Um, mm -hmm. um, and so what's what's with the balloon? What you would normally do, right? You're in. I mean, this is our house. This is America. Mm -hmm. This is we protect this place right mm -hmm. um so if if a small drone comes into your house right yeah. you left the window open here comes a drone comes in right mm -hmm. and you're going what the heck is that yeah. oh that's uh yeah, that's no johnny's deal. drone from down the street <laughs> he's flying around in here isn't no big deal he's that's oh well, wait a second wait he just went in my <laughs> wife's bedroom what the heck? Oh, she's in the bathtub what's going on yeah i mean you say, hey, you got yeah. like one second to get that thing out of here, uh, yeah. otherwise I'm taking it out. And so you can't tell me that we have no way to call, to to communicate with the Chinese. As soon as we saw the thing, hey, um, there's a balloon Ooh. in our airspace. Well, if they you... were. They were talking to him. Yeah. And China said, oh, we'll look into it. And then they said, it's a research balloon from a civilian like research thing and it got off track Oops. okay so no worries it's off track it's not doing its thing we'll take it down yeah we got it don't worry yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's it, it's it's not doing what it was designed to do according to the chinese yeah. so if it's not doing what it's designed to do we'll go ahead and take it down no harm done and uh, y'all can come retrieve it we'll have it over at the pentagon yeah you know um so uh, imagine for one second it's a Russian balloon. Yeah. What I mean Do you think they would let it go across the I mean they let it go from Montana to South Carolina over multiple military bases and before they shot it down after it was past the like after it was already in the ocean again. Yeah, yeah. And and then the whole argument, there were people saying, um, Oh, well, you can't shoot it down. What if there's what some if kind of people? Yeah, what if there's oh. well, what if there's some kind of uh powder in there or some kind of poison or well first of all it's 65,000 feet in the air yeah. the chances of anything some 
gas, poisonous yeah. gas, making it down to to you know a level where it's going to affect us mm. is almost impossible. Yeah. yeah. So then it would have to be a heavy gas or some heavy stuff. Well, the, I, I believe our military would know if that balloon was capable of carrying heavy product. You know, the, the, yeah. you know they could very quickly calculate there's that size, here's the gases mm. that we're familiar with, and here's how that thing's floating or whatever. They said, the military was saying, oh, we, we know the, you know, we saw the... Uh, uh, equipment mm -hmm. that was suspended from the balloon. We know that equipment. We're familiar with their technology enough to know blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, then they should have known yeah. that, that it's not carrying Either some... you trust them that it's a research balloon or you don't trust them and yeah. we need to get that thing out of here. Yeah, and yeah. everybody in here that trusts China, raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You're so, an idiot. Yes, exactly. You're right. <laughs> um, so, the... Uh, and and I'm gonna tell you, I know a lot of Chinese people and mm. love them. They're all great yeah. people. I'm telling you, these a lot of these people are great people yeah. that I know. Um, but they are ruled by a government that yeah, is, it's not the Chinese people. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's the Chinese yeah. Communist Party. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, they're it's subjugated. just like I hope the rest of the world doesn't look at our government right now and go, oh, that's what the that's, American yeah, people are exactly. like. Yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. So, what's your thought on that? Balloons coming in? I, I think I just made it clear. If I didn't, I would have yeah. shot it down immediately. Yeah. I would have. We, I think we communicate with them. Hey, there's this rogue balloon. Looks like mm. it's coming from from you. I mean, from what I'm understanding now is, and and I, I don't know how true this is because you never know the truth, mm. um, a hundred percent. But they're saying they were tracking it. They knew it came from China. They were tracking it the whole time. Well, that's why I was just wondering. How do they know it was Chinese pretty much right away, I think? Yeah, because I, I, I think we have satellites coming. that track all this stuff well, in the I mean, air. This whole thing has just made me question the capabilities of our own government. I mean, well, how, what, do you, how does our previous administration, if this is true, if this isn't some other... Some other uh, Ploy to get the media off track, which they do that often, by the way. Oh, yeah. There's a known fact they do media campaigns. Okay, oh, yeah. what do we need to do to get the public to do mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah? Operation and they, they throw some exactly. information out there. The media runs with it. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So, um, uh, the, I, if, if that's not what's happening and if they're being truthful, which is suspect then the information they said about the previous administration having multiple balloons flying over our airspace yeah well first Not of true. all nobody nobody saw it i mean you no don't think person. somebody would have said it I everyone mean, was, everyone saw it everyone was like what is this thing yeah like regular people were taking pictures with their cell yeah. phone yeah and um you know, the, we have thousands of colleges around the country, and the, uh, they, a bunch of them have all kinds of equipment to look up in the skies, and they're doing it all day long, every day. They all yeah. have astronomy classes and stuff, and so it's hard. And I would believe it would be really hard to float a balloon over our country, and three the, of them apparently. Yeah. No, I heard that. And wasn't not true. only that, well, I've I've heard it wasn't true, but then I heard it was true, and they just didn't oh, they tell anybody. The they lied well, to, I heard the, that they lied to Trump, they, or they just didn't tell him. They didn't tell him. Millie. Yeah, yeah. That's what I heard, is it? Which I believe, because they lied to him about, about the everything. Truth, yeah. Afghanistan yeah. and Europe. And, and they knew that stuff. Trump was not a friend of China. He would have shot that thing down immediately. Yeah, yeah. He would have made a big deal about so it, So you too. just don't tell the president? And then now you have this yeah. old, feeble, brain-dead president mean, in honest, place, and you tell him. He's a steward. He's not a president. Uh, He's just yeah. a steward. He just they just put him there to for everyone to say, "Hey, we got a president." Yeah. Like, no one no one would entertain someone in his condition running <laughs> running for president again at 82 years old. <laughs> He'd be 82 when he runs again. That's just dumb. Yeah. Could you imagine Mimi or like Poppy running for president? <laughs> no. <laughs> actually, actually, I could. 
I can imagine him running for president. Yeah. <laughs> I could also see it being the death of him. There would probably be some uh, embarrassing moments. There would be, but... We'd be like, Poppy, dang. Don't <laughs> say that. <laughs> you can't say that in public. <laughs> um, no, but uh, you know what? That's exactly how Trump was. Yeah. You can't tell me that there was never a he time you didn't go, dang, Trump, why'd you say that? Uh, calm down. Dude. <laughs> it, we were all thinking it. It was awesome. But you didn't need to say that. Yeah. <laughs> what do you call Rosie O'Donnell a horse face? Dude. I just, One of my favorite some of the stuff he said. roasts of all time was whenever he was doing a debate with the Republicans and he called he he called Rand Paul like ugly or something. Says his haircut was ugly. <laughs> like Rand Paul something was like no. talking about his position on something, and Trump yeah. was like, "No, excuse me, you're ugly." Like, and everyone was just like, "Boo!" boo. I didn't know you could say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can actually say and what even you're thinking. Rand Paul was like laughing a little bit, but yeah, I mean. That's crazy. With the State of the Union and balloons flying everywhere, China has no respect for us at all. And I feel like the whole point of that was just to show us that they're in control. Yeah. You know? Show yeah. us that, look, we can fly a balloon over your country, and your president is not going to do anything about it. He's not going to do I think, anything. Well, so, you know, China, they're big on show. Right. Oh yeah. Anytime Taiwan comes into question, yeah, they'll they'll move all move equipment and troops mm -hmm. over to where Taiwan can see them do the military the last exercises. Time they shooting missiles over the yeah. island. Yeah, yeah, lobbed them over the island. Yeah, yeah, and they they did it to uh, you know Korea. They'll do it to. Yeah. Um, they've done it many many places. It's all about show, flexing yeah. their muscle. Yeah. Right. Um. So, I, I don't know. So, your position, I think both of us on that, our position is uh, uh, shoot, shoot her it down. down immediately. Shoot her down. She's got to come. This is a no-fly zone. <laughs> exactly right. Go Maverick on her. <laughs> um, so, okay, back up a little bit because you never answered the previous question. Uh, State of the Union, 1 to 10. 1 to 10? I don't know. I'm, I, I, part of me is kind of cynical towards... Or pessimistic towards America as a whole. I don't know. I when I look back in history, I think yeah, we we've, we've been through some very turbulent times and we're fine. You know, we we like we we did all right. But really, that's only two hundred years. You know, that's only two hundred and thirty years or whatever. So, yeah. I mean, it's not that big of a sample size. To say, like, oh, we'll always come out of it. I mean, we might not. Well, I, I mean, mean we mo most most civilizations, most... That's the thing. Uh, dynasties, Two, whatever. Two, three hundred years yeah. is like a max. Yeah. It is like a pretty long reign. You yeah. know what I mean? For one country. We call it a yeah. country now, but... Yeah, yep. I mean, it's a faction. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't... For a government. Exactly, for a government, Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, I'm, we're pushing buttons with, with Russia and all that stuff. And we're in a very weak position. My position is that we need to cut our losses. Just, just cut our losses. Texas needs to just bail out while we can and just start fresh. Yeah. So I'm yeah. thinking like a two and a half, a three. Really? <laughs> yeah. I mean... Dude, when you got trannies everywhere, <laughs> like, let's just Well, and, uh, when you were <laughs> just talking just now, uh, uh, one of the things I started to mention is it, it, we really, I mean, the, the problem is not only are we headed the wrong direction, the rest of the world, it's like uh, vultures. They're circling. They circling. Know. Yeah, that's exactly Dude, what it is. And so China, thing. even China says, hey, you know, you guys are over there worried about gender studies and we're over here building uh you know yeah and russia's using that weaponry to their to Heck their yeah, they are. With their own of people. course they are they're saying oh, of course they are. look at america they want your kids to be trans they want 
You know, they're devil mm -hmm. worshippers, mm -hmm. whatever. They have no morals. Even now, a lot of European countries are... So there's there's places <laughs> the rest of the world that they, they just know that, you know... It's kind of like in America, the way it used to be. And ho hopefully it's we've kind of gotten away from this. But you can't say we've totally gotten away from it. But as California goes, so mm -hmm. goes the rest of the country, right? It's yeah, just a matter of time. Cool. Um. That, well, there's a lot of a lot of other um, European mm -hmm. countries that they they think that about the U.S. Well, you know, we yeah. see it in the U.S. now. You know, it's another ten years. We'll 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 be that same yeah. same position. Well, um, there those countries there there are a lot of people in those countries uh, are worried now really really worried now just like the u.s was really worried when we saw california going off the deep end we're like what the they're yeah. gonna drag us with them you know because we know it just trickles across the country all they gotta do yeah. is is convince the young kids you know that this is the mm -hmm. right way and then it's a, it's a tough battle to fight yeah. um, and so now you have the rest of the world seeing that we're going the wrong way so mm -hmm. they're gonna they're they're going to start turning from us. Oh yeah, right. They're going to start they're, looking for us. When we lose their either. respect, when we lose, that's exactly right. When we lose their respect, where where do they look? Well, I mean, Chairman Xi seems yeah. to have it together over there. They're all following him, and yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what people like that think. I'm more of a uh, independently minded mm -hmm. person, but apparently most of the world is not. Yeah, like that's that. the thing. Like everyone always wants to say. Uh, look back at slavery, look back at, you know, the Nazis, that would never be me. That would never be me. You know, I I uh, would stand up for what's right, yada, yada. But, dude, at the end of the day, I think 90% of people are just trying to survive. And so, you know they what, that's interesting direction. what you just said. Um, people say, look back at this, look back at that. And you say, you know what, that's, that's I'm, I'm going to stand up for what's right. The thing is, go back as far as you want um, yeah what was right then yeah. is right today it's still the right thing it's the right thing doesn't change over time well, people don't realize though that I mean in my opinion th the right thing has not always been the right thing we had to mold it and, and find out through you know Judeo-Christian values what the right thing is you know, what it means to be a good person, what it means to have morals. Yes. And it's not just, I don't think it's intrinsic in us. I don't think we're just born knowing what's right or how to be moral or good. So now we're in a place where we don't know where our morals or our direction even comes from. Because we've dismissed everything in our past as, you know, as, as just... Uh, mysticism basically mm -hmm. so a lot I, I think uh, I think now you know before when you were growing up a lot of your influence came from your parents and your your teachers exactly. that you were yeah. immediately involved with and your parents were at, at, at some level usually involved with your teachers I mean you exactly. usually had some uh, some circle of influence there yes now your influence comes from everywhere in the world yeah. and most people that are spending their energy to influence people are not influencing not trying to influence their morals directly mm -hmm. they they just want in their pocketbook they want to control them in mm -hmm. some fashion uh, and so that that is that's the influence. Even the you know, the people you call influencers, right? On mm -hmm. on social media, that's their job. I'm yeah. an influencer. Well, turns out everybody's they don't an influence influencer. You to do anything but give them money. And that's do. exactly right. They're that's what they're influencing yeah. you to do. That's why they're doing that, and that's why they make money. That, that's yeah. that's what they're doing. And so so everything everything on your phone, computer, everything. Uh, is designed to get you to submit whether it's your pocketbook your time your values whatever it your is they're, they're your vote they they everything 
is designed to do that. Even the good stuff, believe it or not, even the good stuff is saying, hey, here's a better way, guys. Here's here's a good way. I'm trying to influence you mm-hmm. to change your ways, but this is really the, the right way. You know, so however you look at it, it everything is an influence. Yeah, exactly. And, and the only reason they spend their energy is because they believe that they can influence you and, and change to do something. Your, your mind yeah. in some way. Yeah. So, but my point was so different now than it was yeah. the, you know, years ago. Cause yeah. like you said, um, we've always tried to figure out, you know, you, you learn these morals over time, but when you're immediately, as soon as you can open a computer or yeah. operate a phone, you're being bombarded with, bad influence yeah pretty much it's hard to build it's hard to build good morals when you're when when it's in front of you all the time bad influence well especially if you don't believe in anything i think you know if you don't have any core values and and if mom and dad and grandma and granddad are all working yeah there's nobody there to yeah teach you that all the time you know, used to there were you're almost always around family members, mm. older family members that could teach you these things. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's it's um I'm I'm sticking with the five on the state of the union. Yeah, I'm gonna go with because the Because I have hope. Maybe a two and a half. I'm losing hope precipitously. Um so let's go to our last segment just a real quick after all the doom and gloom. I do plan on buying a house soon. You've owned a couple houses. Give us some quick advice on your first home purchase. Hmm, hmm, hmm. In this crazy... It, so here you're talking about staying in the U.S. and buying a home. I mean, dude, I don't think I could live <laughs> anywhere else. I mean, if I could find a better place to live, I would live there. Yeah. But, I mean, part of me thinks like, no, nah, I got to die here. I got to fight for this country and things like that. I would fight for Texas, but I don't believe in the same stuff most of the other country believes in anymore. We're not on the same page. We're, we wouldn't be fighting for the you, same you thing. You know what? I think we should take a trip. Around the country? Yes. Okay. Because yeah. I think you might find... I might be wrong. <laughs> but, but the problem is their representatives on media mm. are telling us they don't believe that way. Yeah. But yeah. I say we go find out think there's a silent majority i think there is i think there is i think people are are, a lot of people are just you know they're passive or they just they uh you know they're too busy making a living to yeah they're just trying to do their thing yeah and they don't really get involved yeah which is fine you know so if you had to buy a house okay is this a good time to buy a house oh man you know place to buy okay here's what i think uh and my my wife would probably fight me tooth and nail on this, but I don't know that I mean, there are some times when you can say you know absolutely right now is not a good time to buy a house or yeah. it, now now is the time to buy a house you know whatever, but because we we don't know what tomorrow brings. No, no, I don't care how much we think we can predict things. We can predict trends. I, you know, if there was, if if it was an exact science, there would be. You, you know, I mean, if if. Here's what I know. I I I'm not getting rich, uh. Well, on anything, but I'm not getting rich buying and selling real estate. So, yeah. so I don't have the answer to that, and and I think most people don't have the answer to that. Is is today a good time to buy a house? Because when prices are high, especially, well, your first house, you want to buy when prices are low, right? I mean, as much as you can. Yeah. But it might be 10 years before prices yeah, are, are at a place low. where David Pence thinks that, okay, it's a low price now. Yeah. But there is a thing called inflation. There's, you yeah, know. Yeah, but even then, oh, it would just be a valley of a of a trend that's yeah. still going up it's, anyway. that's exactly what i think i think it's always going to go up but there there'll be peaks and valleys within the mm-hmm. the the mountain but i think 
uh, the best time to buy a house. Uh, this is this is a a, a controversial way to think. Mm -hmm. um, the best time to buy a house is when you are um, in your life ready for a house. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry. First of all, we have to differentiate between a house and a home. Um, a, a house can be an investment. Yeah. Right? A home can be an investment, but I, my belief is you don't buy a home as an investment. I believe you buy a home, that's your, that, that's one of your biggest enjoyments in your life. You, yeah. You're there every day, every you night. There every you're night. there. You <laughs> entertain people there. You yeah. do things there. Your hobbies, your, you store things. I mean, your life raise is, kids. yeah, you yeah. raise your kids there. Um, uh, so, so that's why I think it's different. And a lot of people will say, oh, you know, if you're going to buy a home, you have to, uh, make sure you buy at the right time and sell at the right time and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I'm not a subscriber to that. I think you buy the home that makes you happy, and you can't put a price on happiness. Yeah. So if if uh, if you spend, let, let's say I don't what's the median in home right now, three hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah. So let's say you spend. Uh, Three hundred thousand. Let's say your neighbor got their house for two hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Like, dang man, it's thirty grand under market. That's sweet. You did good. You know, automatically you got some equity or whatever. Okay. Um, but you know, he's like, dang man, it's got a little bitty garage. I can't really, you know, can't jack my truck up because it won't fit in the garage anymore. <laughs> you know, all these little things that, you know, come back to. Yeah. Come back to get him in it, but but dude, that thing's worth three hundred fifty grand now. Yeah. It's, so he th that's really the only happiness he gets out of yeah. it is yeah, dude, I bought it, but but they may not even realize that for twenty. If for I ten, if, for if I don't years. die before I sell it, yeah, I'm gonna make I'm gonna be happy on that day. Yeah. Ten right? years from now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but ten years Five maybe. Years from yeah, now. maybe. Who yeah. knows? Who knows? Yeah. But if you buy, do it all over again. Yeah, do it again. So you, to me, that's too stressful. Yeah. I, if I I see a house I like, then can I afford it? Mm -hmm. Is is the second question. But I don't think about it. it can I sell it? Yeah. You know, people say, "Oh, you overbuilt for this neighborhood. You'll never get your money out of it." It's well, great. Hey, come over for a barbecue in my backyard we, kitchen. We had some great times. In the <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's yeah. that that's that's what I look at. So so it you know a lot of people don't like that answer, and and uh, you know different investors and things they they look at things differently. But um, to me, a home is a home. Mm -hmm. and an investment is investment and and you you treat those differently yeah because if you if you're good with your investments <clears throat> you can overpay for a home and it's no big deal yeah. you're still you're enjoying really your home good. and you know the thing is also those same people who whine and gripe about that you know that buying low selling house thing uh they're you know they're out doing things like spending eight hundred dollars on a pair of shoes or yeah. <laughs> two thousand dollars on a purse or the only thing they buy low ever is their house yeah so <laughs> why is it that wall. part of your life that yeah, yeah that you choose to make an investment where like so for example uh, uh, a car you know yeah. now, right now cars are weird so it's not maybe not a best argument for it right now but a lot of times there's a lot of things where yeah a lot of things like well any kind of clothes or furniture mm -hmm. or anything like that you you go buy it and as soon as you buy it it's worth nothing yeah. you know and so it, it, because that gives them joy exactly. right well yeah. why can't your house give you joy yeah you know yeah, I mean, I like so that. that's to me your house should give you joy yeah 
And uh, all the people I talk to about home advice, you're the first person to say that to me. <laughs> well, I may be the dumbest person you ever talked to, but that's how I feel. So, no, that's that's how I feel. It's served me well, you know. I don't yeah. I don't stress out about it, you know. And if if it happens, if God God blesses you with a, you know, you buy a, you buy a house, and a few years later you decide to sell it, and it turns out it was worth way more than what you paid yeah. for it. Great. Yeah. Well, I do want to pretty much be there forever, you know. That's. Like, I want to be buried back by the oak tree in my backyard you that, know what I mean? that's yeah yeah so if that's the case you want to make sure you make pick sure the right, right house <laughs> and you don't want to worry about the price of that yeah. house you know you, you don't want the price to to cause you stress mm -hmm. but yeah. you know or the investment value or anything uh, like that. yeah i don't uh, to me that's not a not home. It's kind of like buying a, a vehicle. People think that way with vehicles, which are over over a hundred thousand dollars now. Yeah. You know, they say, "Well, I just want a nice vehicle." Yeah. You know, I, want, I, I deserve it. I want a nice vehicle. As soon as you drive it off, it's gonna be fifty thousand less. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that you buy it with yeah. the intention of enjoying it, right? Yeah, exactly. I think a house should be the same way. So, think about that. Yeah, that's good advice. All well, right. We've wasted a lot of time this morning. Yeah, I guess I should get off to work now. Uh, we'll try to do this again next week. Let's do it. Sounds good. Hopefully it won't be raining next time. All right. Hey, let's, uh, you know what? Next week we're going to have an email. And then, so if anybody hears mm -hmm. this, listens to it, they mm -hmm. can send us an email with ideas or, or yeah. subject or For questions sure. or anything or leave a comment yeah on leave the a video comment. yep we'll read those and maybe next week uh, we'll have some some video we may do that and yes. we're working on the structure of the show a little bit so we just plan on getting a little bit better each time right on ciao and see you later <laughs>